Please stand for the opening hymn. Good evening and welcome to our Maundy Thursday service. Our service this evening continues at the bottom of page three. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. be with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A 
reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If the household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roasted over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the song.
A reading from 1 Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Please stand. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not now know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. 
for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. O Lord, our heavenly creator, whose blessed Son came not to be ministered unto, but to minister, bless we beseech thee all who, following in his steps, give themselves to the service of others, that with wisdom, patience, and courage they may minister in his name to the suffering, the friendless, and the needy, for the love of him who laid down his life for us. The same thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> um, I have to admit that this was probably the hardest time I've ever had writing a sermon for Maundy Thursday. Um, in fact, I uh, tempted the wrath of Michelle, our lovely choir director, and did not show up for rehearsal so I could finish it. <laughs> um, and I say that because every time I come up here and I preach, I always wonder if it's going to be my last time I'm invited up here. And so I hope to make it worth it regardless. When I decided to preach today, tonight, I didn't really intend to begin my sermon focusing on betrayal and anger, but I'm going to let you know right now that's exactly what I'm going to start with. I think at one point I would have said that I'm really ashamed that I often wake up angry at the world to live in, we live in. I'm angry that historically excluded groups in our country fall prey to others who claim to be Christian. I'm angry that there are still people and children in our country, in the world, experiencing extreme poverty. I'm every, angry that every day you listen to the news, you have to hear about someone dying from gun violence. I'm angry that I have to live in this complicated and unfair world. I'm angry that I'm held to a never-ending list of expectations on what makes me a good person, and not just a good person. I'm queer and I'm Latina, so I have to be a good queer Latina person that focuses on the comforts of others before my own well-being if I'm expected to function in this society. I'm angry that I was taught to be quiet and not make a scene, but today when I think about what I'm angry about, I'm just angry that I was taught for so long that I'm unworthy. 
It's always tied up in nice phrases meant to soften the blow that you're not really good enough. Try harder, they say, or are you really putting your all into it? And yet all I seem to hear is you're not worthy. Not worthy, not worthy. It's a broken record that I often hear and frankly it makes me very angry. So here I am faced with my own anger, all the rage that I hold inside because we live in a world that is seemingly cruel and relentless when it comes to the expectation of being the perfect person. And it's really exhausting to be angry all the time. It's so exhausting that sometimes it's really hard to find reasons to love other people in this world that we live in when you feel so utterly betrayed by them. The Merriam-Webster Miriam Dictionary, because I definitely looked at that, defines betrayal as the act of betraying someone or something or the fact of being betrayed, a violation of a person's trust or confidence. Can you guess what example they used? If you said Judas', Judas betrayal of Jesus, then you would be correct. Judas is the ultimate example of betrayal for anyone that grew up in the church or knows of Jesus' story. We all know that Judas turned Jesus in for 30 pieces of silver. But when I think of that and I think of today and why we're here this Thursday, I think we often forget that when Jesus washed the feet of his disciples, he washed all of their feet, all 12 of them, including Judas. In the final days of his life, the final hours of his life, Jesus performed this intimate act of washing the feet of people that he chose to be his disciples people that he loved. All while knowing that one of them would betray him and telling them all that this betrayal was imminent. And while every time we hear the name Judas, we think of his betrayal, I wonder how many of us consider that when we push people to perfection, when we shame them, when we don't allow them to live their authentic selves, we are betraying their trust. When we idly sit by and watch people tear others down, when we don't speak up if we witness wrongdoings, when we tell ourselves there are people better equipped than us that surely would never allow laws to pass that target people based on their gender identity, sexuality, or the color of their skin, or the religion that they practice. We are indeed betraying each other's trust. Does that make us unworthy? No, it just makes us human. But as much as we want to let the anger burn on, we can't let it fester inside of us, tiring us out to the point where we focus on what makes each of us good or bad. The truth is that we have the capacity to be both good and bad. We are going to stumble and fall, and you're going to see others stumble and fall before you. Who will you choose to pick up? My anger hurts me just as much as other people do. It hurts me because it blinds me to the immense love there is in this world. It leaves me hopeless when there is so much hope. 
and it makes me question others' capacity to be good when at the end of the day, I'm focusing too much on what makes someone worthy when I don't need to decide that. Because at the end of the day, I will love them when they are good, and it is my love for them and their well-being and the well-being of others that will help them see when they are hurting others. And if I can't get them to see when they're hurting others, it is my love that will protect those that are being hurt. We are meant to do so much more than simply read the gospel and reflect on whether we are all following the rules. We are meant to read the gospel and reflect on what Jesus did while he was here on earth. We are meant to read the gospel and push ourselves to live it rather than harness its words to decide who is being the best Christian or the best person. Jesus said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. I know that it's really hard to see love in the world these days. And I know that you may feel angry, as I do. I know that you may feel betrayed, as I do. But I'm not really ashamed to say that I'm angry anymore. Because in my anger, I also find myself reminding myself that I have the capacity to love as well. And so I'm asking you to find it in your heart to love those around you. And maybe sometimes even more importantly, to love yourself. Feel all the emotions, even when they are hard, because that's what it means to be human. But when your anger turns to fury and your trust in others crumbles away because you're hurting and you see others hurting, remember that you are loved unconditionally. You are loved when you make a mistake and you are loved when you stand up for your neighbor. You are loved when you are angry, when you are sad and when you are hurting, but also when you are full of joy. We have to take care of each other to survive in this world that we live in, and we have to be willing to help each other when times are hard. We have to be willing to learn when change scares us, and we have to be willing to wash their feet even when they have wronged us. And then we have to love enough to do what's right. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave you with. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before his death, Jesus set an example for his disciples by washing their feet, an act of humble service. 
He taught that strength and growth in the life of the kingdom of God come not by power, authority, or even miracle, but by such lowly service. Therefore, I invite you to come forward that we may recall whose servant we are by following the example of our master. Come remembering his admonition that what will be done for us is also to be done by us to others. For a servant is not greater than his master, nor is the one who is sent greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. So a little instruction about the foot washing. The chairs that are facing the congregation are where the person whose feet being washed will sit, and the other person, if you need a chair to wash, you may sit in that other chair or you may kneel on the ground to wash the other person's feet. You are invited to participate in any way that you feel comfortable, that you feel so moved. If you only want to wash feet and don't want to have your feet washed, that's fine. If you only want your feet washed and don't want to wash someone else's feet, that is also fine. In this time of prayer, we are remembering that we love one another when we serve one another. So I invite you to join with me in these acts of service.
Please stand. As we have washed each other's feet, had our feet washed, and witnessed these acts of love, we also recognize that we show our acts of love by giving to one another. And so we give thanks to God for the personal care items that have been given for the students of Capital Community College. We pray that the students who use them and need them will know that they are loved, that they matter, that no matter what, they are loved. Amen. The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, Do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. By this shall the world know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. Prayers of the people are form one on page eight of the leaflet. With all our hearts and all with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our bishop, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this city of Hartford, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, let us pray to the Lord. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, in the communion of, of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our Lord. You are invited to add additional prayers, silently or aloud. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, 
and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good evening. Again, it is good to see you all here tonight and welcome to those who are joining us on the live stream. As far as announcements, we hope that you will join us for the remainder of our Holy Week worship services or whichever ones you can make. We will gather tomorrow at noon at South Church and participate in a downtown Hartford Stations of the Cross um, with several congregations making our way from South Church to the cathedral with various stops along the way. And then at 7 p.m., we will gather in this space for the Good Friday Liturgy. On Saturday night, on Saturday night at 8 p.m., we will gather in the garden uh, for the Great Vigil of Easter, which begins out in the garden. And then on Sunday morning, we have one service beginning at 9.30 with a special prelude and continuing with the first, continuing with our Easter celebration at 10 o'clock. We hope that you will join us with any and hopefully all of those services. A word about communion tonight, so I don't have to do it all then. There's the option of intincting or dipping or sipping from the chalice. If you would prefer to dip, please do so after you receive your bread into the brass chalice that the bread plate is on. If you want to sip from the chalice, the chalice will be following the, the bread. We do not have grape juice tonight, but we will have grape juice for Easter. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name. Bring offerings and come into God's courts with praise.
I invite you to stand or adopt another posture of prayer as we gather our hearts and minds to God's holy table. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise, joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might no live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recall recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we praise you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, 
the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. We praise you in union with all your saints and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. the gifts of God for you, the people of God, holy food for holy people.
please stand or adopt a posture of prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food and the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. You may be seated for the hymn of preparation. Thank you. 